Hello, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Join us here at each show where we visit RV products and services in RV tips, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So relax, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Well, hello there, everybody. This is Rob, your host at RV Talk Radio. So happy to have you here with us today. Got some great things to talk about today. Uh, My theme today is going to be being grateful and also being a slightly more personal. (laughs) And I'll explain that in a little bit. So let's start the show. Well, here we are. Ah, another wonderful week. Um, I think today's show is going to be kind of uh, addressing some uh, comments we've been getting, which I am very grateful for the comments. And uh, some harsher than others and some very uh, constructive, and that's good. So one of the things that came up on a video we did is, um, well, it's about Vegas a little bit. So the two weeks that we were at Vegas... I had a some comments come in and notice we kind of changed our format about our videos a little bit. And the answer I have to that is what happens in Vegas <laughs> stays in Vegas. So uh, Vegas is, uh, when Sherry and I go to Vegas, we're not sitting around the RV uh, uh, just hanging out. We are going to Vegas and we enjoyed Vegas and we are adults and we do adult things in Vegas. So, you know, some of the things, uh, you know, we like casinos. You can't take cameras in there. We had uh, questionable places where we could take uh, our camera equipment. And then there's sometimes in Vegas, you just don't want to film anything. You want to enjoy Vegas. And that was Sherry and my um, little vacation for two weeks. And we actually set aside a large budget to kind of go nuts and have some adult time. And so our videos were not very personal. And they are more just show and tell and kind of showing Vegas. And that's why. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, so I just didn't have stuff that we could record or didn't care to record so it was a little bit of our vacation so if people feel like oh we like the old Rob and Sherry shows and stuff and those are still there they're still coming it's just that particular two weeks was uh, showing kind of the commercial side of Las Vegas and the area and the fact that it is Vegas and remember the old saying what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas and that's how we're gonna keep it so That brings me to another subject. How personal should our videos be? (laughs) Uh, If you notice, there's a lot of great channels out there and and they've got a lot more followers and and stuff like than we do. And, uh, and, uh, they, Boy, they, they record everything, shopping and uh, every little thing, laying down together and and smoochy, smoochy stuff. And, and that's all cool. And 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 vlogging, V with a V, vlogging, uh, boy, I mean, people just thrive off of that. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Tell us more. Tell us every secret. Blah, 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 blah. And Sherry and I just can't quite do that. We, uh, uh, we reveal, you know, you can definitely tell Sherry and I have a very close relationship and we love one another a lot. Um, maybe because we're older, we're a little more restrictive of, of some of that. It just doesn't seem appropriate to us and, and that's to us. And so, but every once in a while I do have to be reminded that maybe, you know, tell us a little more about Rob and Sherry. And so I'll try to do a little bit on this show, but 
you got I guess maybe it's our generation or something, but um, we come, you know, we both have fairly formal families. So, you know, we will definitely talk about what we feel is appropriate and occasionally we'll pull your leg a little bit to uh, have some fun with you as far as telling stories between Sherry and I. Uh, but um, I guess we're going to be kind of limited. We're just not going to be those kind of people. And that's okay for the other ones. And the younger generation seems to be able to talk about more personal things and show more personal things. And with us, we're going to say, assume that everything's okay, guys. And <laughs> we're just going to show the highlights of our great relationship of Sherry and I. And guys, when you've been married, we're going on 36 years. And Sherry and I met each other when we were seven years old. And we met through square dancing, believe it or not, a little square dance club called Snoopy Swingers. And then uh, uh, through the years, we actually stayed in square dancing and did competition. This is back in the 70s and 80s. And if you didn't know, I became a square dance caller at age 17. And I actually restarted a little preteen group from uh, for 7-year-olds to 12-year-olds called the Snoopy Swingers. And then those kids kept growing, so I started a teen club which was called the Teen Swingers, and then later on the Teen Towns Swirl. Anyway, just, I was a square dance caller, and I called for children and teenagers. Uh, later on, uh, over the years, I actually stopped calling for a while because I had a professional career at an aerospace company. And uh, um, later, when I moved to Central Oregon, I actually started calling adult square dance clubs for a couple of years. And just the, I didn't mean to go into this subject, but the reason I don't do so much square dance calling now, I do have my equipment still, and I still do my, I still do it, uh, but I only do it for like one night shows for like, oh, like a Mormon group might have me do a family night and teach square dancing to the families and stuff, and some, uh, I've actually done weddings and things like that, but uh, the problem with being a square dance caller is, every, you know, you have a dance every weekend, well, if you're a square dancer, that's great. If you can't make it that weekend, no big deal. You're on vacation or something. If the square dance caller doesn't show up, it's an issue. And so I didn't like being booked so much. And and then when you teach lessons, you got to teach. You know, it takes like I don't know twenty weeks to teach square dancing. And so every Sunday or whatever, I had to teach lessons. And so I'm I was I didn't like to re being restrictive of my schedule. And so I just don't do it that often anymore. But uh, if you really dig back and if you type in Snoopy Swingers or Rob Scribner Caller, you'll see another side of me you probably didn't know about. And uh, so, yep, uh, but it's, that's how Sherry and I met through square dancing at age seven. And we actually did dates in elementary school and stuff. Our mo my mother used to call her mother and we'd go to movies together and stuff like that. And, and then we really didn't get serious till we were in high school. And we got married at age 19 and uh, didn't have children until we were 21. We actually got married because we liked each other. So anyway, that's a little bit about me and Sherry. Oops. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Well, I just started, well, I actually just finished, <laughs> just started and finished, a video that shared something that was uh, personal to me a little bit is it was it's actually called and, and when you watch the show you won't see it for another week and a half because our videos are out there a little bit anyway it's um, three things I carry in my pocket and um, I carry with them me I carry those with me all the time and look forward to the video so you can actually see it but uh, I'll talk about it on this show so in my pocket, my right hand pocket, I carry three items all the time. And we're not talking about money and wallets and things like that. Three items. And I'll tell you what the three items are. One is, dun, 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 ready? Chapstick. <laughs> I always carry chapstick. And, and if you really travel and like we've gone from the Northwest to high desert to low desert, to heat, no heat, and cold and all that stuff. Oh my gosh, you definitely pay the consequences on your lips. And so constantly, 
Uh, if I'm always carrying chapstick, and if it's not for me, sure he goes, do you got your chapstick? I need it. So, <laughs> always have chapstick with you. Number two, what's the other thing Rob carries in his pocket? Yes, an RV travel um, buddy, or RV talk radio is on this one, uh, keychain flashlight. And I used to keep it on my keychain, but I don't always have my keys with me. So I wanted, I just keep it in my pocket. It's a little flat flashlight that it's not very big it's just a teeny little thing it's an led light and it is the most convenient thing i've had ever and it's not just for rving but how many times if you're an rver you will be going outside in the dark for i don't know taking the dog out uh the propane stops and you gotta switch tanks and then you gotta you know it's dark and you gotta see if the um, meter's reading right and and uh, I, I use that flashlight, I swear, every single day, whether I'm at the RV or not, there's some reason I need the flashlight. Or in your car and you drop something on the floor and you can't see it, and, and you even turn on the dome light, you still can't see. And uh, I've even used it in restaurants where you can't read the darn menu because it's so dark. And I've actually pulled out my little flashlight so I could read a menu. Maybe that's an age thing. Let's <laughs> give that away. But... Anyway, I highly recommend if you can get a small, itty-bitty little flashlight, and then you'll see a picture of it, and I'll put a link on Oh, well, if you go to RV Travel Buddy, our uh, shopping mall, you can see we actually sell them, and that's another thing we uh, have uh, that helps raise money for us and helps us out with your guys' donations and support, which is just a tip jar. And... Uh, uh, everything's, you know, it seems a little pricey, but you gotta remember it's kind of like donating to us and help or a tip when you buy one of our little items. Uh, it helps us out and we really appreciate it. Uh, n is it needed to survive? No. Is it uh, grateful for the fact that you helped us out? We really appreciate that. We invest in you and sometimes it's nice to know that you guys invest in us. And we've gotten some really nice comments and, and nice uh, people bought stickers just to help out, and uh, we love to get the stickers out. And by the way, when we sell the stickers, it's not unlike us to add some extra things to the package. So you, you might actually get two stickers or maybe some little stickers, and <laughs> we spoil people. Anyway, we're not making much money off those things, but it's fun to send them out, and it's our way of saying thank you, and, and you guys are saying thank you to us, and we appreciate it. But anyway, let's change the subject here. So the third thing we keep in my pocket, well, I keep in my pocket, is a rock. <laughs> yep, it's a rock. It's a shiny, glazed over rock, real pretty. It's green, and it's not very big. And what it is, you know what it is? Some of you guys know what it is. It's a gratitude rock. And it's like, what? <laughs> it's a gratitude rock. And what's a gratitude rock? And uh, if you guys ever get a chance to go see our other channel called Paradigm Chimes, and I'll try to put a link on the description for if you want to go see it, is we make videos based off of Law of Attraction, which is like um, if, if you're positive, positive things will happen to you. Um, like attracts like type thing. And the other thing we talk about is paradigms and paradigm shifts, which is the habits we have as we've grown up and as we change our way we think, uh, help, you know, is will bring on great things to you. Anyway, the gratitude rock comes from law of attraction. And you can actually, if you ever uh, read the book, um, The Secret, they talk about gratitude rocks. Anyway, um, what it's for is when I see it, when I touch it, when I view it, whenever it just comes out of my pocket and I set it on the dresser or whatever, it's to remind me to, at that very moment, to be grateful. Yep, a real positive thing. And whether you're spiritual or a little religious or just a um, positive thinker, gratitude is a very powerful thing for your soul. Let's put it that way. Um, spiritually, um, law of attraction, it help If you're grateful for now, for everything you have right now, 
um, more great things can happen to you. And so that's what it's all about. So that is something I talked about in the last show is taking the time to smell the roses, to be grateful. And so I didn't really talk about my gratitude rock. And, and I do keep, if you ever meet me, ask, you can, first question you can ask is, do you really have a gratitude rock in your pocket? And I don't think there's ever been a time I haven't. But you can try to catch me if you can. Anyway, if it's not a gratitude rock, um, find something else that, that or maybe it's a necklace you wear every day. And every time you touch your ne necklace, it, it's a gratitude necklace, let's say. That moment, to stop for a moment and say, wow, what's, going, what's positive right now? What's going good? And be grateful for the things you have and the, for the now, right this minute, when you say, all right, I need to uh, think about maybe five or ten items that I'm grateful for right this minute. And that's what a gratitude rocks for. I definitely have a lot more um, little personal things to talk about and being grateful for on this show. But I do want to remind you to take a look at a app that we uh, kind of approve of that we think is a great product. And it's called Go Mechanic. And just on your Android phone, just go to Google Play and download it. And it's a great little um, app that you can put on your phone that helps you find services that will come to you. And if you'd like to know more about Go Mechanic, uh, go to their website at gomechanic.us. Once again, it's called gomechanic.us. It's a great little app, and I highly recommend it. So if you're stranded or you're at an RV park and you need some windshield replaced or tire issues or change of oil or um, your refrigerator's gone out uh, and you may be in an area that you're not familiar with, Go Mechanic is a great tool to help you find that the help you need that'll come to you. And the other thing I've been talking about a lot lately is I get real tired of hearing about this e-begging stuff and and uh, people out there that I think sometimes shouldn't be out there in the RVs that can't handle um, breakdowns and things like that. And so we said, okay, let's be proactive. Here's what you should do instead of um, not of panicking or being somewhere far away, broke down and you can't pay for it, is Good Sam Extended um, Service Plan. And all I were asking is you guys go out and get a quote and find out if it's something you can afford and believe me, then you can go anywhere. You don't have to look for the cheapest mechanic in the, in the neighborhood to help you fix something on your RV. You can actually go to certified real RV mechanics, go to the big, big dogs and be able to afford it because you're protected. And most of them will uh, definitely support Good Sam. So anyway, uh, down below we have a link. Go to that link. You can get a free quote. And if you get a quote from us through our link, you also get a $10 gift certificate from Camping World. So check it out. Got to put in a little bit, you know, these people support us and we support them. And so we always want to make sure and give them a little time on the show. I also want to remind you, if you have a product or service or you have something you'd like to share on our show, RV Talk Radio, you can go to rvtalkradio.com, the website, Go to the contact page and just write to your heart's content. Or you can contact me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com and shoot me a note. And as you can see on this show, we are addressing some of the things that have been uh, coming our way. So rvtalkradio.com, contact us today. Well, some other questions have come up, like uh, how is our pets doing with all these changes? So you got to remember, we came from the Northwest. There is nothing in the Northwest to really be afraid of with your pets. Pretty safe area. Maybe the worst thing that could happen there is fleas. 
in the tick once in a while in the summertime. But anyway, now that we're heading down south, the critters are a little different and the surroundings are different. And so, you know, we got Cinder, who's an idiot. She's a Northwest dog, so she has no clue of what the desert has to give her. And uh, I, some of the things I have witnessed in the past is uh, I've got to be careful what they eat and get into. Uh, the biggest thing, um, dog does not understand a cactus. So we got to be careful in that area that when she, we kind of refrain and, uh, from letting her go free when we're running around in in uh, desert when we're trying to get pictures and stuff. And, you know, the critters here are probably a little nastier than the ones she has in the Northwest. And she has no idea. She's an ignorant dog. And so I don't, you know, as it's getting warmer, I guess I got to be careful of like uh, rattlesnakes up here, down here. <laughs> And we're in Arizona now, guys. And also, um, it's not unusual to see it, uh, if you turn over a rock or something. You can actually find yourself uh, so either some nasty spiders or once in a while, um, um, scorpion. And that's pretty common down here. Nothing to freak out about. It's just how it is down here. You just have to be wise about where you find that stuff and where you reach your hands and what you climb on and 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 be uh, proactive when you are in the region and but dogs aren't quite that smart sometimes uh, some are but uh, cinder i got a feeling would get herself in trouble so we kind of keep her on the leash a little more and uh so, but boy the poor dog she's got a nose like you wouldn't believe you remember cinder's a chocolate lab she's got this powerful powerful nose one of those noses where she can be walking around and if there's a different smell that comes along she and she's responding to you having a good time and she smells something it's like a squirrel oh my gosh it's like what was that she just totally spaces out whatever that smell is is um drives her crazy so you know uh, she just totally blinks out and that's all she thinks about is what that smell is and so i have to you know she's down here oh my gosh everything's a new smell everything oh my gosh Poor dog's going nuts and drives us crazy because she's a well-trained dog, except when her nose is going. Oh my gosh. It's like she just doesn't know anybody. She's just, what is that? What is that? I got to know. I got to know. What is that smell? Anyway, so um, I'm sure it'll get better as she's down here more, uh, but uh, definitely different for Cinder and we're being careful with her. Uh, remember when we were in Northwest, we went to the vet and made sure she had not only her standard shots, but shots that are applicable to being down south. And uh, I think one of the biggest things they worry about down here is uh, heartworm uh, problems. And so she's, and uh, there's another item down here that, uh, and not only here, but it was in Washington too, that if you have a dog that's very outdoorsy and stuff, there's another shot or vaccine out there to help protect them from certain uh, um, diseases or um, or viruses. So anyway, Cinder's doing great, but she's um, being brought into the different regions carefully because we just, you know, we love our dog a lot. And as far as our cat, <laughs> she just owns the RV. And she just doesn't really give a crap. <laughs> Other than that, you're in my chair, please move. Um, or you get out of your chair and she's like, this is my chair now, but we do take her outside once, once in a while we have a harness for her and she, you know, gets a roam around, but she's kind of a coward. If she hears a noise and stuff, she's like, let me back in. I'm, she'll sit there and say, meow, 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 let me out. We'll put her outside. And one little noise is like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> let me go back to the RV that I own. And, uh, so anyway, the animals are doing great. Uh, Cinder, we worry about. She's our big baby. Remember, she's only three. She's still stupid. And uh, she's not. She's a very smart dog. But uh, uh, we worry about her. And we are protecting her. And so uh, if uh, I can recommend as you're traveling around, please invest in a good vet. Tell them what you're doing, where you're going, where you might be. And make sure that you have all the vaccines and vaccinations uh, necessary for your cat and dog. Um, if you really, truly love your animals, 
uh, I'd be making an appointment today. So now that we're in Arizona and Sherry's doing a little contract work for a week. In fact, she's gone this week. And then uh, she comes back for a week. Um, in a couple, well, we're actually moving the RV this weekend to uh, uh, Fort McDowell area in Arizona, which is about 20, 25 miles out from Mesa. And Sherry will finish her contract work from there. And then we have about three more weeks and then she goes full time into a job that she accepted down in Arizona, which makes me a kept man. And we'll be doing more extended RVing instead of full time RVing, which we're still full time RVing, but just not moving as much. And so um, this is a hint to tell you that this is some uh, really cool changes going on. And uh, one is, you know, we'll always have RV stuff. Just, and RV Talk Radio always be there. Always RV stuff going on, whether we're mobile or not. Uh, there's just tons of stuff going on. And when we're in the RV parks, just every story, you know, so many neat people to meet. Anyway, so I'm hinting that we have a couple new channels uh, we're working on. It's, they're not totally active yet. And one is called <laughs> um, daydreamexplorer.com. And um, what that's going to be is is Sherry and I, maybe a little more personal, um, talking about travel and stuff, but it's not going to be totally RV oriented. Uh, sometimes we get caught up in this niche and Sherry and I do so much beyond the RV stuff that we want to share it and we don't feel like sometimes it's appropriate for our RV channels. And we're also talking and him and Han about doing a little bit of a abroad uh, traveling over the borders. And so those aren't exactly RV shows. And so um, Sherry and I have a, when we met each other and, and started uh, hitching up, you know, everybody has a song. <laughs> so here's another personal thing about me and Sherry. Our song is Daydream Believer. You know, yeah, the one from the monkeys. <laughs> All right, daydream believer. Anyway, so we even had our first couple of boats that we owned. We owned boats for years. Called them daydream believer. Uh, and it means a lot to us. Um, and as we gotten older, daydream believer means a lot to us. So we obviously can't use that as a name because that's a, a copyrighted thing for the monkeys song. But... We came up with Daydream Explorer, or you can actually put an S on it, and it'd still be good. Anyway, we both we own both domains, and uh, it's taking your you know, how many times you just sitting back and daydreaming about things you'd like to do, or wouldn't it be cool to go to Belize, or wouldn't it be cool to go see Guatemala, wouldn't it be cool to maybe go to. Uh, uh, Mexico and, and a couple of places and maybe it'd be cool to go uh, to Europe and so the theme is on that show is uh, we start off with the daydream and then we show the daydream coming true or prepping for the daydream anyway uh, it should be a fun show a fun channel um, a little different concept for me and Sherry different photography and then we have another one called checkthisoutpeople.com. Yep, checkthisoutpeople.com. That particular channel is going to be more product-oriented, uh, doing reviews on like we do with cameras and, and items, but once again, not totally RV-oriented. So there are two new channels that are not totally RV-oriented uh, because we just want to go beyond the niche of just RVs. And sometimes uh, the channels will uh, blend. And so you'll, you know, whether you're on watching this show or whether you're watching uh, or starting to follow those new channels. And by the way, if you want to subscribe to those new channels, all you have to do is go to RV Travel Buddies channel on YouTube. Off to the right is a list of channels that we call favorites. Those new channels are in the favorites. And if you click over them, you see there's still... All there is is introduction videos and things like that and trying to do
do a proof of concept going on. But if you want to subscribe early, um, you just click on those and subscribe and you can start um, watching those videos as they become reality. And they'll come out kind of slow at first as we're kind of getting our mojo going on those. So we're kind of excited about that. So anyway, there could also even be a possible new podcast and not the end of this one. This one will always be going forever and ever. Anyway, uh, uh, that will pertain to a more broad spectrum of travel and and entertainment um, and not just RVs. And so we're looking forward to that. I hope you're looking forward to it. Um, don't be afraid to change. Uh, change is good. And it's a paradigm shift. <laughs> so there it is, paradigm. Um, paradigm chimes. We talk about that kind of stuff all the time. And... Uh, the older you get, I know change is hard to accept. Um, but anyway, they're just additions, more expanding into a whole new uh, realm. We just don't want to be so niche and 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 just um, and we don't want to be held back. So we'll have a lot to share, a lot of fun stuff. It kind of explains why we've bought a lot of equipment lately, and um, why we have kind of. Uh, mixed up videos a little bit right now because we're kind of doing a transition into a uh, holding holding still for a little while and uh, enjoying retirement and enjoying uh, working on RV Talk Radio and, and RV Travel Buddy. Basically, Cutting Edge Enterprises LLC is our company, uh, our corporation that owns all this, and we're just expanding it a little bit into some new stuff. And... Um, uh, <laughs> so busy, busy. It's like, I don't know when I had time to actually work nine to five. I, I don't know. So if you're afraid to retire or been thinking about it, trust me, if you got little things you'd like to do, they'll start taking up your time and you go, you'll never think about work again, your old job. So if you're kind of hemming and hawing about retirement, number one, <laughs> there's never enough money. So just get over it. Uh, You'll learn how to live with what you got. Two is life is too short, and you know it's um, there's a lot more in the past than there is in the future for me and Sherry. If when you talk about age and living um, lifespan, so I don't. Know. I want to make the best out of that time we have left. So uh, if I have to live with a little less, uh, I can still be happy. So can you? So let's get personal again. <laughs> Trying to satisfy one of our, our watchers, <laughs> our clients. I don't know what they call them. Anyway, uh, followers, I guess we'll call you. So a little bit more personal stuff. So personal habits. Talk about personal habits a little bit. Like what what's some of your personal habits, Rob and Sherry? And <laughs> probably, I don't know. So, one thing I'll let you know is I used to be a smoker and I smoked for almost 35 years and I did quit, but I still do what they call that vapor thing. And the way I did it, and I, another little secret about me is in uh, my high school days, I used to work at Westport, Washington in the summers as a deckhand working on the charter boats. And so, uh, tough work. We worked on, um, went out every day out in the ocean. We uh, took people fishing uh, back when the salmon fishing season um, was crazy and it was insane fishing towns and stuff. Westport, Washington, and that was in the 70s. And uh, so, you know, you worked, at, you know, we did 10, uh, the, about 10 hour days every day, seven days a week, all summer. And the only time we wouldn't go out is doing small craft warnings or something like that or broke the boat broke down or something anyway so uh there was only a few things you could do as a teenager there was <laughs> party and smoke and that's where i learned to start uh, I started smoking and then we just that's what we did and you know we didn't know back in the 70s you know how bad smoking was anyway but it you know got addicted so i smoked for many many years and so the way i was able to quit and some people ask me this question as I use uh, that 
Chantix. <laughs> it was called Chantix. And uh, uh, I had no reaction to it. Some people freak and say, oh my gosh, I've heard terrible things about that stuff. It didn't affect me at all. Other than fact, it made me quit smoking. And then it's the habit part that's um, that was hard to break just that time. And plus, I like to smoke. And it caused me that time to, you know, especially when you work on computers and you do editing and things like that. You need to take a break. You need to walk away uh, because one is you know expand your uh, imagination. You need that five ten minutes to just kind of think about things, and you uh, you come up with great ideas. So smoking, I enjoyed smoking for that particular reason, is taking that five ten minute break of just clearing your head. So the way I replaced it was with a vapor, uh, and uh, I use a vapor, and I I actually have it down to down to three. Uh, milligrams of nicotine in it and uh, I personally think I I'll probably be taking it to zero pretty soon but um, boy it makes a big difference uh, first of all <laughs> yes I gained weight people go you look a little heavier than you used to be and I've been not smoking for I think actually almost three years now and yeah I gained weight quick and I mean quick uh, that's you you know it's going to happen and you say oh yeah. But it, it happened, and I was doing a desk job at this aerospace place that I was working at. Wasn't getting much exercise, so I put on a good 30 pounds. Uh, by the way, I'm starting to lose weight. I think I'm down about 10. Um, and I am i don't think I'm doing anything more other than just being more active. Anyway, so uh, quit smoking. So I don't smoke, but I do vapor, uh, or vape they call it. Uh, let's see, what's drinking? Say, Rob, sure, you guys drink a lot. And they're like, in Vegas, did you drink a lot? <laughs> I can tell you, we don't drink very much. But we like we do social drink. We're not against drinking at all. Um, we just discovered that, <laughs> this is so dumb. We went to a grocery store. It's like, gosh, look how, in fact, you probably saw one of our videos about doing a, a, the Deschutes Brewing Company. And it's like, Gosh, you know, Sherry and I never get a chance to try all these different beers, you know, draft beers. And, and um, anyway, so we were in the store the other day and, and at the grocery store, and we see all these different beers, all different flavors from darks to lights to, um, and then what they call hard um, sodas and stuff like that. And it's like, we never try those. And so there was actually a clerk there at the time. And he said, you know, can we just buy one of these things? And they go, sure. And it's like, really? <laughs> you can mix and match? And they go, yeah, dummy. And it's like, man, you know, here we are. What, Sherry and I are 55 now. We never knew that you could really do that. So now when we go to the grocery store, we buy samples of different uh, beers so we can try them. And we're starting to really like that hard apple stuff. That's yummy stuff. And uh, trying different versions of it. Um, some of the hard sodas um, we've been trying. But we've been trying the different beers that we're just curious about. And so, um, and then once in a while, Sherry will have, and I will have what we call a nip. Um, we'll, um, if we're feeling good, nothing's really going on, maybe we're watching movies about 10 o'clock at night, we might make a... Uh, uh, a spiced rum and Coke or Crown Royal and Coke. Once in a while, we'll make a uh, vodka and cranberry drink and just one drink. And we might have one drink like that once a week, sometimes every two. I mean, a bottle of Crown Royal will last in our RV about a year or more. And so uh, we're very social drinkers, but we, we're not against it. We're just responsible and uh, we just like to have a nip once in a while, different taste. Um, and when it comes to going out to dinner and stuff, we're not really big wine drinkers. We both, Sherry and I both get headaches really easy. Um, I would prefer a cup of coffee over a drink, and Sherry would prefer the next thing I'll tell you about is Sherry doesn't drink coffee. Um, and she does like tea. I love coffee. I could drink coffee all day long. I'd drink it at night too if it didn't uh, affect my sleeping. But Sherry's little niche that she has always had, and it's not the best thing in the world, 
but neither is my coffee, is she loves Coke. And uh, she cracks open a Coke like I poured the first cup of coffee. And you kind of go, oh, but if you're a Coke drinker, you probably understand. But she, that's her coffee in a way. She likes Coke. And so she's been kind of tapering it off um, the best she can. But that's her thing. She likes Coke. So <laughs> if you're coming over our RV, uh, <laughs> bring a bottle of Coke. You always be, uh, uh, we like to keep, we always have Coke here. It's always Coke. We never say the P word. Nope. Don't say the P word. Pepsi. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't believe I said that word. Coke is what we drink here. <laughs> and uh, Coke is uh, also uh, what we make our mixed drinks with when we do have a drink. And so there's always Coke in this RV. Never. I can't say it. Never the P word here. So uh, that's one of our little habits. Uh, one of Sherry's. Sherry's got hers and I got my vapor thing. The other thing you hear us mention, and, and we kind of say it lightly because people freak out and stuff, but Sherry and I do like casinos. Now, I know that's a small drink, whether you're a social drinker or whether you, or whatever you do, you have to be responsible. And so, Sherry and I like the bells and whistles and the nightlife. And is it a good investment? No, it's entertainment, entertainment. And so I like to go to a casino. We like to play. To, sometimes we just stay together and uh, play, you know, play together. One is that's much easier in the budget. And two, it's just more interactive. And then other times, uh, Sherry will take a hundred bucks. I'll take a hundred bucks. We'll split up for a while and see who does the best. <laughs> <laughs> whoever's the highest we stick together and use their money anyway uh i can guarantee you that won't happen in vegas don't it's just it was terrible and, and if that isn't proof you know normally if we can go to a casino with 200 dollars, and uh you know you lose your 20 you can lose that easy but a lot of times you maybe lose only 20 or 40 and sometimes you break even and occasionally you also come ahead that never happened in vegas anyway but as soon as we found a um we stopped at a casino here in payson and you can feel the difference uh i think it has to do with overhead and uh anyway so sherry and i we actually went to the payson uh casino the other day and did all right we still lost a couple of bucks not a lot but it was fun. It was actually fun. And we had a really good dinner. And the casinos always have such good restaurants. And that's what we enjoy to do. But we do it responsibly. Um, uh, other people are going to movies and all that stuff. Sherry and I aren't big movie watchers. We don't go out to di big dinners a lot. Um, we try to eat at home more. So our exp our play money isn't necessarily um, movies and entertainment that way as we just go to a, a casino and and if we did okay that night then that means we can go sooner again some other day if it's a poor night and we lost our two hundred dollars then we kick back for a couple of weeks and then we uh, uh we'll go again uh, but anything that we lose is losable it's not going to hurt us and if you can learn how to manage your funds that way and 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 realize it's entertainment there's nothing wrong with casinos the other thing i'd uh, like to share with you that was kind of personal to me and share is we love day road trips oh my god we a lot of people i don't know they don't like to burn that much gas or whatever and we did we have to do it in the truck because we always have cinder with us is we love to go to places and do day trips and so we don't sit around the RV much. Um, maybe we should get better at it if sitting around and trying to do more happy hours or something. But we love to get out and about in a car and go visit either some areas that we heard about or go discover new ones and get out of house and go for rides. And that's where you see a lot of our photography comes from was road trips, a dirt road we went down and go discover some real cool stuff. And when we're in a new region... Uh, the fact that we're in a, a totally different region than we're used to. We're used to evergreen trees and not being able to see very far. 
And uh, so the desert is fascinating to me and Sherry. And there's a beauty to it that is so different than the Northwest. And the Northwest is a beautiful and there's so much water. And here it's water is precious. And, and the, uh, the animals and the plants are so different. And so we probably fo you know, photograph too much of it. But, you know, it is our, it's our experience that we're sharing with you. So uh, just understand that we see a perspective of we don't see all this desert and, and these plants and critters and, and lifestyles like um, we've lived a lifetime in the Northwest in the Seattle area. So different kind of world. Um, waters, <laughs> there's always too much water. And so anyway, we love road trips. And so you'll kind of probably notice in our videos that you can kind of tell we do a lot of road trips. The other thing is it's not that unusual for us to do cinder days. <laughs> and you say, oh, Cinder's in an a RV. Uh, I guarantee you she's our family member. And she kind of gives us little signs like, you really need to take me somewhere where I need to run. And if it's in a dog park, and we really don't like dog parks, sorry, and it's because one is, there's a lot of unresponsible, um, not very responsible owners. Two is, if there's going to be a dog with a disease or something, viruses, that's a great place to catch it. <laughs> and um, and then some dogs are just aggressive and sh Cinder's not a real aggressive dog, but she can be when she needs to be. And, and so uh, anyway, I just hate the scenarios. And so when we go to a dog park, we're really cautious. And we see someone bringing in a dog that's acting up, we'll pack up old Cinder and, and we hit the road. We'd rather go find a place where she can go run. And hard to do, I get in trouble that way, but... Uh, we work hard at giving our cinder her cinder time, and she just sometimes just likes to run. And um, we get her kind of tuckered out, and she calms down a lot more. She's a very energetic dog when she needs, well, if she doesn't get some exercise and outside time. So, um, so we do love our cinder time. The next thing that people have asked us was like, uh, What's your favorite food <laughs> besides all of it? <laughs> we love popcorn. Oh, my God. This whole family loves popcorn, including Cinder. Oh, gosh. Popcorn, I swear, we can't. We make a bag of popcorn. Uh, it's like watching, uh, I don't know, um, Gremlins or something. <laughs> it says, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> Leave me alone. I got my big, I got my bowl of popcorn. And oh, by the way, why is it most, or well, at least I cannot eat just one kernel. It's got to be two, three, four kernels at the same time. And then I watch my wife and she can eat one at a time. One. How do you do that? <laughs> and <laughs> if I go to a, if we do go to the movies, that it's all about the popcorn. It's like jumbo. Give us a jumbo popcorn. It's like you can't even sit in the chair. You get so much popcorn with you, and it's like I, <laughs> it's like, why is it when the movie starts, most of our popcorn's gone? <laughs> we just love popcorn. <laughs> anyway, so popcorn. Big, big, big thing in this family. We love popcorn. And last but not least that I'll share with you is we love a really good meal. Um, are we, we're we not, uh, we don't try, I mean, we like organic, but we don't, we're not partial to one or the other. Um, we love a good steak. We love red meat. We like all of everything. And we do like to try new types of foods or something we've heard about um at least try it once to see if we like it the one thing we really like about traveling is occasionally come across different types of food do we like sushi yep we like sh we like sushi took uh us a little time to get used to it now we love it we love sushi um down here in uh, arizona there is some great places to get some mexican food um Lots of good places to eat in Phoenix, by the way. And uh, we're looking forward to, if we go abroad, um, we're looking forward to seeing some of the different kinds of foods uh, there, too. 
So there you go. A couple of personal things that you guys could uh, say that we actually shared with you. And that's kind of the level that we like to keep it at. No deeper than that. Um, anyway, uh, I hope that kind of makes you feel like you're more part of our family. And we appreciate that too. So there you go. Some personal stuff. Well, there's one more thing I want to put my two cents in for is I was listening to a hangout the other day uh, held by uh, Blacktop Boondocker, uh, John. He does a great videos. I always enjoy watching his stuff. His hangout was about solar and he I think he kind of believes in solar about as much as I do is uh, I have solar. Uh, I put an 85 watt panel on my roof. Uh, I use it to trickle charge my batteries. Uh, not so much when I'm RVing, but if uh, the RV's in storage or um, just sitting uh, boondocking by itself, it will give me a slow trickle charge. I rely on my generator. Sorry, that's what I do. And so the people ask, and I spend a lot of money to put that in. I have uh, I have an inverter system put in the back to run off the batteries. So it really comes down to to batteries uh one is i tried to get a good explanation of why six volt batteries are better than 12 and obviously you want two six volt batteries to make a 12 volt uh, system and the reason being is my understanding is six volt batteries which are used a lot in golf carts are and deep cells are truly deep cell batteries are truly made to hold a charge longer and so they'll tell you many times that do your battery banks in six volt um, batteries instead of 12 because they last longer and hold a charge longer that's all i know i'm not an expert at it so the question is rob did you really need solar do you like solar should i get solar my answer is for me and sherry didn't need it don't need it what you do need is batteries if I, uh, I have two six volt batteries I put in, if I really, really did more boondocking, I would add two more. So uh, four or better and battery uh, storage. So it's storing the power is more uh, important to me than accumulating the power. And why is that? Because I have a generator and I have a fifth wheel with a very quiet generator. So I could fire up my generator and not really be that irritated irritating but if I'm boondocking you're usually away from people anyway so um, when we were boondocking before we were not looking at the solar panel and if it's charging how many amps I was getting and it just didn't mean nothing it still doesn't mean anything I got I don't think I really needed to invest in a solar panel what I need to invest in if I was doing more boondocking is more batteries and that's a lot cheaper than putting a solar system in so that's my opinion sherry and i really didn't need it are we glad we have it yep we're glad we put it in and not, uh, no regrets but not needed don't get all worked up about the solar thing people it's all about the batteries and a good generator and a quiet generator and um just with two batteries sherry do and i do fine boondocking uh we fire up the generator in the morning get everything all charged up again go through the day and uh, usually around dinner time we'll fire up the generator again anyway because we want to use the microwave and we were able to keep plenty of power in the RV just with two six volt batteries so and we watch television and all kinds of stuff so it was like okay guys so that's what we did um, I guess if you're going to use an inverter a lot they do pull power um, but once again it's really about the storage um, so to me, so that's my opinion. That's my two cents worth about solar. Chill out about the solar, save your money, get batteries guys. <music> Amazingly enough, an hour is almost gone by. <laughs> it's like, it's so easy to sit here and yak, 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 yak. And there's so many other things to talk about, but I want to remind you, send us your comments send your questions your observations we'd love to hear from you um constructive feedback i don't need anything rude um you can go a long ways in giving this um 
criticizing and giving us uh, uh, good advice by just being polite. And we appreciate that. Uh, don't forget, we sell stickers and good things like that. And the cinder dolls and stuff. You get a chance to get a sticker from us. We appreciate it. It, uh, it goes uh, to help us keep, uh, well, just help with the uh, things that are growing in the, in the projects that we're doing. And we really appreciate it. And we consider it a tip. And uh, so, really, thank you very much for those of you who have been buying stickers lately and, and, and buying all kinds of little things from us. And we uh, really, really do appreciate it. And it just makes us want to work harder and try to do better for you. So, uh, you got, we got kind of our theme song going on here right now. And, and uh, so, I want to take the time to really put emphasis on being grateful. And guys, as you, if you're younger, you probably think you live forever. But uh, as time goes on, you start realizing that every day is precious. And I kind of talk about it as one of those uh, egg timers with the little sand in it. And every granule that drops through is a memory or experience. And as time goes on, it's getting less and less and less. And you gotta, and you want all those little granules to be something special. And that is when you should focus on being grateful, gratitude, smell the roses, uh, live for the now. And uh, so if you need a rock to do it like I do, great. Um, if not, just if you can get in the habit of every day walking out the side door of your home, of your RV or whatever you're doing, your boat, whatever, and just take a deep breath and say, wow, thank you. I'm grateful for being alive. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful that I can uh, walk out and see something new. I'm grateful for this day. Um, I'm grateful for my family, my wife's, my friends, whatever it is. So anyway, I hope everybody gets the gist of it. Being grateful will be it's good for the soul, good for your spirit, and it makes you a good person. And so, I can wrap this up now. This is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to talking to you next Monday. And please send us your comments and your ideas and, and all your happy, happy stuff. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye now. Bye now.